Hello, secret agents. How good to see you. Uh, now, wasn't it so good to hear from Agent Zachariah? Began to get a little bit worried about him, a bit lost in the field and what had happened to him. But it's so good to catch up with him today and uh, to uh, to receive those messages from him. Um, so I, I took um, I took this code, this pig pen code. That was did you have a go with that? It's very fun. I do like it. Um, and I've worked it out. I've worked out the words that were missing. Um, have you done it too? So these were the words I found. I wonder if they're the same as the ones you found. So one day Jesus was teaching. So we've got uh, teachers of the law in every village of Galilee. And the power of the Lord was on Jesus to heal the sick. And then they went up onto the roof of the man on the mat into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Jesus saw their faith and said, friend, your sins are forgiven. And then who can forgive sins but God alone. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, why are you thinking those things in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? That was another word. So that you know the Son of Man has authority. Get up, take up your mat and walk. Everyone was amazed and they were filled with awe and wonder and said, we have seen remarkable things today. So I hope you managed to use the pig pen code and work that out. Um, and of course, you can find it in the Bible, in Luke chapter 5, um, and in here too, in the Diary of Disciple, um, also in chapter 5. And there's some little pictures and things to go with it. So I've been having to think about this story. Um, I'm wanting to share this story, but uh, of course, because we're undercover, keeping it a little bit secret, um, I didn't want to bring too many things with me. So um, I've just got a few things here. In fact, I've just got this, um, and I'm going to have a go at telling you this remarkable story where it said it was remarkable and everyone was amazed at what Jesus did. So shall we have a think about it together? So it all began with this man. And whenever you would look at this man, he would look sad. And that was because he was sad. Because he couldn't walk like other people. He couldn't dance around like other people. He couldn't jump like other people because he was paralyzed. And all he was able to do was lie flat on his back in his bed. And in those days, particularly, they didn't really have wheelchairs in the same way. And they didn't have, um, they just didn't have ways to look after people and ways to enable people to, to work and do things. So he'd spend quite a bit of his time begging and relying on his friends. Unfortunately, he had four, that's backwards, isn't it? Because that's all right to me. He had four very good friends. And these very good friends really cared for their friend who laid flat on his back in his bed all the time. And they heard one day that Jesus was coming and they went up the hill and they heard Jesus. They saw that he was doing some miracles, that he, were, he was healing people. And they said to each other, those friends, our friend who's flat on his back in his bed, maybe if we could get him to Jesus, Jesus could heal him. So the four friends, this is the tricky bit. How do we do the four? Here we go, got it. The four friends of the man who lay flat on his back in his bed went to speak to him and said, come on, we want to take you to Jesus. So they took the man laying flat on his back in his bed and they took him up the hill to see Jesus. When they arrived, Jesus was in a house. But it wasn't a house like we have now with a pitched roof. In those days, the houses had flat roofs. Um, and Jesus was inside the house talking. But when they looked in through the window, there were so many people in there, there was no room for them to get in, never mind their friend who lay flat on his back in his bed. They couldn't get a bed in there. They couldn't get anywhere near Jesus. Oh dear, what were they going to do? And then the friends noticed that at the side there were some steps that went up to the roof of the house. So they had an idea. 
the four friends took their friend who lay flat on his back in a bed and they took him up the stairs on to the roof of the house. Well, when they got to the roof, that's where they started being very inventive. They started lifting the tiles and taking off anything that was on the roof until eventually there was a hole. And they looked down through the hole and they could see Jesus down there. And they could see a house full of people down there, all listening. And Jesus looked up and the house full of people looked up. <coughs> getting a bit dusty. You made a hole in the roof. But the four friends with the friend lying flat on his back and the mat were not stopped by, uh, by people's upset and by people's annoyance at what had happened. They found a long rope and they attached it to the friend's bed. And very gently, the four friends lowered the bed down through the hole in the roof of the house. As it reached the bottom, it stopped right in front of Jesus. And Jesus looked at the man who lay flat on his back in his bed. He looked up through the hole and saw the four friends peering down through the hole. And he looked at the man and he looked at the faith the faith that those friends had, that they knew there was something special about Jesus. They knew that if they could get their friend, flat on the back, in the bed, to Jesus, he would do something because he had compassion in his heart. He cared for people. He wanted to heal them. And on seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man who lay flat on his back in the bed, your sins are forgiven. Well... There were some teachers of the law there who had their special hats on. They were not happy. They mumbled amongst themselves. Who does he think he is? Who does he think he is, this Jesus? Well, I don't know. But the only person who can forgive sins is God. So what is he saying? I think he's blaspheming. He's blaspheming. He's saying he's God and he can forgive sins. Well, I don't like this at all. And Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he said to the Pharisees in their hats, which is it harder to do? Is it harder to say to the man lying flat on his back in his bed, your sins are forgiven? Or is it harder to say, get up and walk? But so that you know that the Son of Man, that Jesus, the Son of Man, has authority, has the power, has the permission to forgive sins, to heal people. Jesus said to the man lying flat on his back in his bed, get up, pack up your bed and go and walk. And that's what he did. The man lying flat on his back in his bed got up and he walked. And the people were amazed. Whoa! And they praised God. Whoa! At the amazing and remarkable thing that Jesus had done. And as the man who was healed and could now walk, who could now get a job and earn a living and wouldn't have to beg, it was an amazing gift. Um, amazing gift from Jesus. Um, and as the man and his four friends walked away, they too gave thanks to God for all that he had done. And that's our story. That's our story. What do you think about that, hey? Oh, those Pharisees. Hmm. They were a bit grumbly and mumbly, weren't they? Wondering who Jesus was and, and how he could do that. But it changed everything. So Because they'd got their bit of the Bible, the Old Testament bit, and suddenly Jesus was doing things differently. And I don't think they liked the change. They, they were in control of how things were being done. And Jesus was coming and suddenly changing it all. But actually what he wanted to bring them was freedom. Not, oh, you have to obey all these rules all of the time. But Jesus came to bring life, to bring healing, 
to bring um, a way of following God um, by God's Spirit, not by following rules. Now, it, the rules help because they help us make good choices, but it's not about the rules, it's about loving God and loving each other. And Jesus came to do that, to change everything. And I think the Pharisees found that quite difficult. And maybe we do too, you know, if we're doing something and somebody challenges us and says, well, what about? I wonder why? And I think we can get a little bit like, hmm, 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 I know what I'm doing. But it's amazing, isn't it? Amazing that Jesus was able to forgive sins, that Jesus is able to heal people. And sometimes we can get a little bit like, well, I want it to be like this, I want to do that, I want to be the important one, a bit like those Pharisees. But actually, it's not about us, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And I think... This is an amazing story showing how Jesus had authority. He was God. Um, that's amazing, isn't it? He had authority to forgive sins. And he had the power and authority to bring complete healing. Complete healing to that man who had never walked. Um, to make everything work again. What a creative miracle. To kind of make all those muscles and bones and everything work again. And the nerves link up from the brain to the, to the legs. Just incredible. Um, and I think it's really good for us to remember and realise how amazing Jesus is. And he gives us good gifts and talents too. But we're not Jesus and we're not God. Um, and just like everybody worshipped God at the end and was amazed, that's something we can do too. So I think it would be good to finish uh, by praying. So well, why don't we pray and think about some of those things that Jesus is like as we've been learning over these last few weeks. And maybe some of the things that we see, um, see around us and see that God has done for us. Um, and let's, um, let's thank God for those. So I, I, quite, I quite like these, I like wavy arms. Um, so I'm going to use these as wavy arms. So why don't you pray too, put my arms together. And I'm going to say, Jesus, we thank you, Jesus that you are God, that you can forgive us when we do the things um, that we do wrong. We thank you, God, that you are full of love and compassion. Thank you, Jesus, that you cared for the man and you were, you just loved the faith of the friends. Um, and we thank you um, that you love and care for people and you love and care for us. Our Father, help us to be like those four friends. This is always the bit I found tricky. Number four, because I have to do it kind of backwards. As I'm looking. For the four friends, help us, Lord, to be like the four friends that look out and care for others. And we thank you, God, and praise you for the good things that you've brought us. We thank you um, for family and friends, even those we cannot see very much at the minute. We thank you that they're there. We thank you that they love us. We thank you for the sunshine. The sun's come out this afternoon. We thank you for the little snowdrops and the little crocus that are starting to grow that remind us that spring is coming. And we thank you for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there we go. Why don't you have a thing? What have you learned about Jesus from that? Maybe you could write it down and send it to me in that pig pen code. Have a go with that. It looks great fun. Um, maybe you could make one of these. It's just four pieces of card um, and some little clips on. Um, maybe you could have a go at, um, at telling the story. You could perhaps have a go at filming it. You do need a bit of practice, so we'll give you warning. <laughs> but maybe you'd like to have a go at retelling the story too, or retelling Lego, or else could you... Um, uh, you could uh, draw it or like, use a box and actually make um, make a little man that hangs down and make the box, anything like that. Um, maybe just uh, get creative and see what you think. Uh, but that's all for now. Uh, so um, over and out and um, I shall see you soon, agents. Bye for now.